Hey friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Ash here with Gen Sense. Today I'm gonna to be going over with you guys my essential fragrances, 10 of them. Fragrances that I can't live without. Yes, I will physically perish and cease to exist in this physical realm if I don't have these 10 fragrances. Maybe that's actually just exaggeration. I don't think that if you take one of these away that it'll actually just go off into the nether realm or something like that. Regardless, uh, we got a, a nice bunch of fragrances here. Fragrances that I love, niche fragrances and designer fragrances and a, a little splash, a smattering of indie as well. It's really hard when you do one of these videos because people that watch the channel have a very good idea of what's gonna be in a video like this and yeah. A lot of these fragrances, if you watch this channel with any kind of regularity, uh, should be familiar to you, but I tried to put in a couple, uh, at least, that I don't talk about super often. Whatever, 10 fragrances that are essential that I gotta have. Let's check them out. And before we jump into this, friends, it is code time. Uh, two codes for you. You may know what these are. Jomashop.com. They are taking over the world of discounted fragrances where they're trying to anyway. They've got a bunch of them on there. They have some sick deals. I gotta say, I picked up some Nishane from there. The code is GENTS8. It'll give you $8 off any order over 110 bucks. Use that, save yourself a little bit of cheddar. And then of course, TwistedLily.com, my niche fragrance store of choice, at least if you're looking to buy something at full retail. But you can save 10% off full retail with the code uh, GENTS10. The spirit of William Shackner, he, he touched me there. Don't be touching me, William. All right, first fragrance, don't drop it. Oh, it's Dior Omen Tense from Christian Dior. Legitimately, if that would have fallen and burst on the ground, I would have felt like the biggest moron ever, and you would have seen it all here, so it would have been great. I love Dior Omen just about all of the ways that it's presented. Dior Omen Cologne, yeah, yeah, I love that. Dior Ohm, love that a lot. Dior Ohm 2020, even that. The discontinued Dior Ohm, oh, absolutely. Dior Ohm Parfum, yes. But if I could have just one, it would probably be Dior Ohm Intense. Also, I love how my bottle has aged ever so slightly and taken on an even deeper, warmer, richer hue. Looks awesome. Smells better. This is the pinnacle of iris for me in designer fragrances. Makeup-y, sure. Creamy, yes. A little bit sweet, rich, sophisticated, classy, sexy, mysterious, alluring, inviting, all those things, yes. Performance here is really good as well, which you would expect because this is an intense fragrance. It says it in the name. Even though it's a little bit pricey, Dior Homme Intense is something that I will always have, and I do have backup bottles of it. So even if I burst that bottle just now by dropping it like an absolute putz McGee, I would still have Dior Homme Intense. I would just have less of it. Then we've got one from the House of Creed. It's like the go-to beginner's fragrance house if you're just getting into niche because the fragrances do have that quality, but at the same time, they're just as wearable as pretty much any designer out there. And my favorite of the bunch is, of course, Green Irish Tweed. This is my go-to springtime fragrance. I think it smells fantastic. It was made in the 80s, but it still works today just as well as when it came out, like me. The lemon verbena in here absolutely rocks off the top. It's very green and fresh and brisk. You've got a bit of iris in here once again, but it's a very different type of fragrance than Dior Homme Intense. You also have the Creed Ambergris note in here, sandalwood, mint, and a bit of violet as well. Green Irish Tweed, another fragrance I will always, always have, and I also have backup bottles of this one as well, just like Dior Homme Intense. Back to the designer realm we go with Stronger With You Absolutely from Emporio Armani. Stronger With You Absolutely is my favorite in the line. The thing that it does different, the thing that it adds in and tries to set itself apart with is a bit of a boozy note, a booziness to the fragrance, which I think is pretty well done here. It's maybe not as overwhelmingly boozy as some people would have liked, but it adds a really nice facet or nuance to the Stronger With You DNA, which is clearly evident in the fragrance. It's not light years removed from the original or Stronger With You intensely. It's slightly tweaked, slightly changed, but those changes in my opinion are for the better. It does have a similarity to actually a number of things out there nowadays because a lot of different companies are trying to kind of get on that Stronger With You bandwagon and copy a little bit of what they've done with the scent profile. But even though it's not hyper unique nowadays, it still smells fantastic. Back into the world of niche with Amouage interlude black iris man 
It's a flanker. It's an amouage flanker, which at one point in time was something you could not even imagine. Amouage doing flankers? Nay. But it has become uh, much more accepted for niche fragrance companies to do flankers of their better performing or more popular fragrance releases. And so interlude Black Iris, here it is. Oh no, we're falling into a trend here with iris notes. Hmm. Let me look over the fragrances that we have yet to go. There's only iris in one of them. I think we're okay. Interlude Black Iris smooths out that opening from the original Interlude. It tones it down a little bit. That oregano that a lot of people hate in the original has gone bye-bye. And then the iris in here really ramps up, in my opinion, the classiness of the fragrance, ramps up the wearability and versatility of the fragrance while still maintaining that Interlude DNA front and center. I absolutely love Interlude Black Iris, and thankfully, my wife does too. Sometimes with fragrances like this that has a, a heavy emphasis on incense, the smokiness, it's not an easy sell, but she likes it a lot, so it makes it where I feel even more comfortable putting that one on. All right, I'm gonna get the last Iris one out of the way here. That way we can go Iris free for the rest of the way. It's Le Mal Le Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier. This one is one that got a good amount of hype when it first came out, got a decent amount of love, but then as time has gone on, it's like the hype or the love has just increased exponentially as more and more people have gotten it. I've actually had people email me and tell me, hey, thank you for talking about Le Mal Le Parfum. It's one of my favorite fragrances ever, and I checked it out because you talked about it in one of your random uh, millions of videos. Which is weird because I don't actually get emails like that all that often, and yet it happens often enough with this one that I remember it. So this has a, a sweetness to it, a vanilla sweetness along with lavender, and of course the iris that I talked about before. It has that Lamal DNA to it from the original, but here modernized, made a little bit darker, maybe a little bit sexier. Definitely more modern and less dated smelling. That's not a shot at the original, that's a classic fragrance at this point, but anytime I smell that, I kind of think, mm, that's been done a bit too much. I, I don't think I want to wear that. You can respect it, you can appreciate it, but not want to wear it all at the same time. Back over to Niche, but this is a fragrance some people would not consider Niche. They would consider this a designer fragrance because it is from a designer house, but it's in their private blend line. But we are not getting into that argument right now because that is an argument that is as old as time itself. Fragrances from Tom Ford, it's just good old Oud Wood. Done by my friend Richard Urpon, the perfumer of Oud Wood. This is a very easy to wear Oud fragrance. Some people are frightened to death of Oud if they've never really worn Oud fragrances and you know they're starting to look at niche Oud scents. They just think to themselves, man, I'm gonna waste so much money buying this and then absolutely hate it because it's gonna smell like pig poo. Now that's not to hate on all fecal ouds. Actually, I have some that I think smell really dope. Uh, but at the end of the day, I also realize that uh, normal people probably won't. Oud wood though, very easy to wear. As I said at the beginning, this is a slightly darker woody scent as compared to your more typical mainstream woody offerings. It's got a good amount of spice in here, good dose of sweetness as well that helps take the edge off of that oud. Very classy smelling, great fragrance for fall and winter. Oud wood is killer. And now in the designer realm, I'm gonna take Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. This fragrance you guys voted on more than any as the one fragrance that you would have if you could have only one fragrance for the entire year. It's gotta last you all seasons, daytime, nighttime, office, date, any situation you find yourself in, you can only have one fragrance. The one that you voted on the most was this one and that makes a lot of sense. Bleu de Chanel is like a more refined, more dapper blue fragrance. It doesn't go heavy handed or crazy with the sweetness. It's very modern, it's fresh, but at the same time has a good amount of depth. So you really can pull this stuff off year round. The performance is nice, the compliment factor is huge. Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum is a jack of all trades fragrance and it actually does everything really, really, really well. Most of the time you would say like jack of all trades, master of none, like it's okay at everything. And then Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum comes along and is like, nah, actually, I'm good at everything. Back to Niche, 
Baccarat Rouge 540 Maison Francis Kirkshawn. Haven't talked about this fragrance all that much lately. The amount of hype that this got is right up there with Aventus. This is basically like, in my mind, the number two most talked about, most hype niche fragrance other than that one. Got kind of a cotton candy, candy floss feel to it with this good amount of sweetness from saffron in the fragrance, along with uh, what people will describe as precious woods. This uh, amber woodiness that the fragrance has. A unisex scent that just about anybody can pull off. It's one of those fragrances that some people do have a uh, problem smelling. They'll wear the fragrance and go, oh man, BR540 has no performance whatsoever. I can't pick this up. Almost like it's Molecule 01 or something from Centric Molecules. And then somebody will walk by you and be like, what are you wearing? It smells great. And then you realize, oh, I've gone anosmic to it. I can't smell it. That fragrance has some personal memories for myself, times that I've worn the fragrance and, and made good memories and everything. So I would keep that one for that reason, if not because it's just a really easy to wear fragrance that everybody seems to like. Last designer, Light Blue Forever Dolce & Gabbana. I talked about this a lot the year that it came out. I still talk about it. I love the grapefruit in here. I'm a sucker for it. It's bitter, it's sour, it's tart with just the right amount of sweetness. It's very rindy and uh, to me smells much more natural than a lot of other citruses that you're going to find in designer fragrances. But some people do not like that. And I get it. Some people will smell this and say, it smells like so much grapefruit, like you had an actual grapefruit and were squirting it on yourself. That's not how I want to smell. So if that's your train of thought, then probably it won't be for you. But I like the departure here from some of the more typical citrus styles in designer fragrances. I like that tartness, I really dig it. And then as it dries down, it hits me with vetiver, which I am also a sucker for. So light blue forever, I'm keeping that, I'm taking that. And then last but not least, we've got one from DS and Durga. Uh, bottles near empty, it's cowboy grass. Yeah, it's sad, look at that. Mm. This one is aromatic and herbal and has a lot of vetiver. I had to work in one vetiver fragrance one way or another, and this is one that I don't talk about all that much, so I figured now would be a good time. It's a very rich vetiver fragrance that has vetiver presented in multiple facets here. That's one of my favorite things about vetiver as a note or ingredient is depending on what type of vetiver you use or how you use it, it can come across so many different ways. Smoky, earthy, green, fresh, dark, a lot of different things, like I said. So this one has bits of green freshness to it, but then it also has this earthy undertone and almost kind of a leathery edge. Cowboy grass, an awesome vetiver fragrance, but it really truly is for people that love vetiver as a note. If you don't, you're not gonna like it, I don't think. All right, guys, that is it. 10 fragrances, 10 essentials that I would keep, that I have to keep, or else the Lord will take me. Let me know in the comments some of your essentials, fragrances that you absolutely adore, that if you went butterfingers, fumble hands, and dropped it onto the ground and blew the bottle all over the room, you would sigh dejectedly, go online and order yourself another one. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Thank you.